So this is a great question, a trigonometric function question, which is really, really nice to see. So use the information you're given um, to add as accurately as you can, labeled and scaled axes to the diagram below to show the graph of, of f over, over a portion of that Saturday. So we know that high tide occurs at P, and that high tide is at 5.5 .5 meters. So somewhere along here, I'm not gonna fully do it in yet. I'm just gonna roughly do it. 5.5 .5 meters is gonna be along that line. And then the depth there at low tide, somewhere along this line right here. And again, you could do it lightly with a light pencil. Okay, somewhere along there. All along here is 1.7. I don't know where uh, the x-axis and the y-axis are yet, though. Hey, I might as well put a line, actually, up here. It's nice to put in. So there are the two heights that I know. Okay, halfway between them. Well, actually, no, let's read on a little bit further. High, high tide occurs at 2 o'clock. And again, 2 o'clock in the morning, and again at 2... 34 in the evening. So this line right here is 2 in the morning, 2 a.m. And here is 2.34 p.m. Okay, so getting our head around it a little bit more. What else do we know about it? We know it's a cost curve. Okay, cost curve, that's fine. But can we put in any other scale? Well, if you look between here and here, there are 12 boxes. So that'll be one box for every hour. Okay, so if you went backwards from 2 a.m., you could get to midnight. And we can call that our y-axis. Okay. So our y-axis, and we know our heights along it. So we know this height right here is 5.5 .5 meters. Every box going down represents 0.5 of a meter. So this would be four meters, three meters, two meters, one meter. Oh, I'm not perfectly happy with that. One meter, zero, which would make this the x-axis. And from there, we can put in our times because we know that this height coming straight down was 2 a.m., 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., a little pushed for space, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11, 12. Now, we get up to 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and you get the idea, so on. Okay. Or you could do it up in 24 hour clock, they did it in 24 hour clock there, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, in general, a nice and easy question to begin with, um, particularly the fact that you get 0, 10, 18, 20 marks out of the question. Okay. Really, really nice question. Find the values of A and the values of B. Well, now you need to remember, it's A plus B cos C of T. Now, what do A, B, and C stand for? Not stand for, what do they influence? More importantly, what do they influence? So, A influences the midway line B influences the amplitude above the amplitude, the curve passes above the midway line and below the midway line, and C influences the period. It is not the period, it's what it influences. Okay, so go back to the question. We knew the maximum height was 5.5 .5 meters, and we knew the minimum was 1.7 meters. 
So how can we find um, the halfway point? Well, we can find the average of these two numbers. So 5.5 .5 plus 1.7 all over 2 ends up being 3.6. So A is 3.6 because that's where the midway line is. It's If you look at here, 3.6. I'm just going to put it in for a second. The curve oscillates around that line. That line is y is equal to 3.6 because every single point on it, that point, that point, that point, that point, that point, they all have something in common. They all have the fact that their y coordinate is 3.6. Now what's b? Well b is influenced by, or b influences the amplitude. So if this was 3.6, and our maximum is up here at 5.5 is that distance there, the amplitude. So how big is that? And again, it's exactly the same as the distance down to the minimum. So how big is that? Well, that's just 5.5 minus 3.6, which is 1.9. So B is equal to 1.9. Super easy. Really, really nice question. Zero, five, eight, ten. Okay, so so far this question, thirty marks, stupidly easy. Okay, what's the period? Well, we know that the period is defined as two pi over c. We want to find what c is. Okay, show that c is equal to zero point five, correct one decimal place. We also know that the period. Go back. How long did it take for the wave to repeat? How long does it take to go from there to there? So it's from 2 to 234. It's 12 hours, 34 minutes. It's 12 hours, 34 minutes. Or to put it in decimal form, it would be 12.56 recurring hours. So I know that 2 pi over C is equal to 12.56 recurring hours. 2 pi is equal to 12.56 recurring C. C is equal to 2 pi over 12.56 recurring c is equal to 0 0.4999 c is equal to 5, 0 0.5 0 0.5 to one decimal place Boom, job done next part so it's important to note that we now actually have a function for the height we have our a plus b cos c of t, and that's the height. Okay, well, what was our a? It was 3.6 plus 1.9 cos 0 0.5 t. And the question is asking us, when is the height equal to 5.2? Okay, now, in the afternoon, the time in the afternoon. So equal that to 5.2, subtract 3.6 from both sides, 1.9, cos 0.5t is equal to subtract 3.6, what do you get? You have 1.6, divide both sides by 1.9, 1.6, one point six divided by one point nine. Then take the cos inverse of both sides, so zero point five t cos inverse one point six over one point nine zero point five t is equal to zero point five six nine six and then multiply both sides by two T is equal to 1.139 hours. Now, think about that. 
high tide was 5.5. So it's going to be coming up to high tide, it was 5.5. Just before high tide, it'll be 5.2, but and it'll be 1.13 hours before high tide. High tide was at 2.34, I think it was. Is it 2.36? Was it what was it? Two thirty four, yeah. So it'll be one point one three no one point one three nine hours before two thirty four and it'll be one point one three nine hours after two thirty four. So what's that in uh, hours and minutes? It's one hour eight minutes. So our answer is gonna be two 34 plus 108 and it's going to be 234 minus 108 which happens to be 126 p.m. and 342 p.m. Or you could also say 13.26 and 15.42, doesn't really matter, okay. Um, Mark's going for the question, 0, 3, 4, 5. And that's it. Pretty, pretty nice function, trigonometric function question. Um, be very if you've done a bit of revision on it should be very comfortable on it and um, in general important if you can do if you can read a piece of information like this and before going on attacking the question if you can actually go and find what the a b and c is find is it a cost curve find is it a, a sine curve and you can find the a b and c you can do nearly all of the question. I'd be surprised if you wouldn't be able to do all of the question. Um, again, just seeing that I haven't put the marks in, this was 0, 3, 4, 5. Um, yeah, hope you found it helpful.